My name is Ursula Hovanec and I'm co-organizer of uh, e-migrating landscape series of uh, seminars. And this is the second seminar, uh, which, uh, which uh, uh, the first one was last, uh, last week. We, uh, we had the pleasure to, uh, to have here Iri Drogov and Joanna Rajkowska. And today we, are, we have a fantastic seminar. We have uh, two wonderful authors. Uh, we have um, Asha Bakalar and Grażyna uh, Plebanek, and we will be speaking about, we will be talking about uh, two novels that were published last year. My novel is about a drug dealer, about a woman who grows cannabis in underground containers in eastern Poland, and she becomes this drug queen. Uh, she relocates to London to enhance her business, and, uh, but she has a family over there and a twin sister. And as it comes with crime and with drug dealers, uh, especially involved in some kind of high-level um, business like that, um, she has the family to deal with, and um, one day she receives a phone call that she has to go back and uh, attend a funeral of one of the family members. And she has five days to convince a person she's stuck in the room with to um, join um, the narrator in, in her drug dealing. So that's kind of short what it's about. Oh. It's a book uh, about, about uh, triangle, about, uh, about love affair between uh, married men and, and, um, and the journalist. Uh, uh, it's written from the perspective of this guy, so uh, he's a house husband. Uh, I think it's a new uh, character, type of character, in, in especially in Polish literature. And uh, because he comes to Brussels uh, following his wife, uh, the wife is uh, is a successful lawyer. She works for a European Commission. I was obviously writing for the British audience because I wrote it in the English, not in Polish. And and I knew that from the from the very beginning that I wanted to write it in English, not in Polish. So my I hate to use the word target audience, but there will be English speakers, obviously English readers. Um, there are obviously Polish people who can read English, so to say. But I wasn't thinking of Poles in Poland, let's put it this way, um, when I was writing it. Do you think your novel is presenting a new perspective on Britain, or is it actually presenting Poland? Is it a different sort of Poland? Um, um, some, some of the people, some of the journalists told me when, when I did events with them that they enjoyed reading it because it showed them the perspective of an immigrant. That, that A lot of people get upset in Britain about many things and it, the, the book spoke to them in a way because British are very polite, you know what I'm saying, right? So they're not going to <laughs> complain openly about something. We Poles are very direct. So um, in a way, the book speaks the minds of people that don't necessarily want to say something openly in the way, but recognize there is an issue with some aspects of, say, living in the UK. I think there are two types of, of emigrants in Poland. Emigrants uh, who emigrated because of the political issues and, uh, and economical issues lately. But this is the case of people, adults, who decided to go to, to, to leave uh, native country and to, to, to live abroad. Uh, but my character uh, from illegal liaisons, uh, he's, he's, um, when he emigrated from Poland, you can't say that he really emigrated because he was a child. Mm -hmm. So uh, his parents emigrated, but he, he did not take this decision uh, consciously. And this is the, uh, I would say, this is the difference be because, uh, between our characters because uh, Joanna writes about people who um, emigrate and it's always very hard for the adult because they have to, you have two options. You can deracinate, as you, as you say, or you can be like the Polish big emigration wave uh, after the war or after the November uh, uprising from, from 19th century. There were people in the, uh, grouped in hermetic circles uh, because they wanted to stay Poles. Mm -hmm. uh, but but my character, for example, he was uh, brought up in England. He he, he studied in in France. He he works in uh, in Brussels. We've got two very different sorts of new <laughs> European poles going on here in a way. One who is ranting against this inheritance, which she's definitely desperately trying to kick out in mm -hmm. all sorts of interesting ways, and one who is 
Perhaps a different sort of new European, but mm -hmm. maybe it's the difference between born into emigration and... And choosing. then, yeah, choosing to be an mm -hmm. immigrant. It's, it's funny, it was said at the beginning how uh, similar those two novels are, but we must... Uh, uh, if I agree, I also, I also have to stress how much... how different milieus we are dealing here with, how different kind of uh, social class milieu situations and, uh, and so on. The difference that is striking about both is also the... The, exactly the obs obsession with Poland, that uh, the higher your class is, it seems that the less uh, the obsession of, with Poland. Because, mm -hmm. uh, but but in both books, you uh, nevertheless you deal with with, with, with Polish culture. Polish culture is, uh, regardless of how many years you seem to be abroad, uh, something yeah. that strikes as something extremely strong and oppressive in in, in times. Mm -hmm. You both in different ways reverse gender role, but Jonathan is had by, um, gosh, her name's Andrea. By man. Andrea, Andrea, as a woman might have been had by a man, but, and yeah, and on the other hand, that Magda in your book, yeah, acts like a, a yeah. man, man in various ways, sexually and, and, and socially and so on. Is, can you see these patterns of gender reversals? Is that part of what you were doing in your mm -hmm. novels? Yes, yes. I mean, but this is completely different subject. This, uh, this uh, gender roles, uh, because it's changing now, and it's very, very visible. It's after I published Madame Mephisto, I got lots of strange emails from readers and non-readers who read, say, uh, snippets of the book translated into Polish somewhere in, in some press article or something, and I was accused of being not patriotic. How dare I write in English and? Don't I have shame? What kind of language I speak with my parents, right? And, you know, that kind of silly comments that I couldn't understand where they were coming. I mean, I and some of these people, they've lived here. They never speak English, you know. They never learned English. And, um, and I can understand the anger and frustration if to read a book written in English about Poles and my character it is, I would agree with what Agatha said, that I mean I never thought about it when I was writing it to think of her as a man. She was a woman and the narrator and but I deliberately created her mother as being very oppressive and being very stereotypical and um, being everything that Magda is running away from. The, the difference between political re refugees or, or, uh, ec uh, uh, or people who emigrate from economical reasons, this is different motivation and this is different kind of behavior uh, abroad. Because as, as I said, you can group in Polish circle and de de deny uh, all strangeness, you, 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 don't, yeah. you don't learn the language. Yeah. But, uh, or you can deny that, that you have been ever Pole. But in my case, I would myself call nomad rather than than immigrant because because I immigrate. I didn't immigrate. I, I just I just moved to Stockholm and then I moved to, to Brussels and I'm curious about stuff and, and I meet people and this is what I'm doing. So um, I don't feel um, as I I wrote I wrote I read your book and I felt this. Uh, emotions and uh, they were not my emotions because I don't mm. feel any urge to uh, to, um, to to cut to, yourself uh, from to, to do anything w anything with Poland because because mm. I feel like the Poland is there Poland is in me I, I don't have to defend it I don't have to if somebody provokes me yes uh, of course mm, but 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 I don't have to uh, react so strongly. I do like the very opening paragraph, which is brilliant, because there's very little religion, unlike in Asher's book here, but we have this nice one here. Um, uh, he would have run, this is the first two sentences, he would have run the relay, work, home, family, without stopping, had not the old edifice squeezed between insignificant buildings allowed stained glass light into his soul. It's wonderful. So he stops at a church and light comes into his soul, right? We're going to find out more about this. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Jonathan enters the church and feels the sickly sweet smell of candles rouse his sleepy cock. Yeah, it's absolutely brilliant because <laughs> we find out later that he meets his lovers in churches and then they go and have sex elsewhere. But there's this Pavlovian, this is why it should be called the Pavlov Dogs. The Pavlov Dogs is the title of the book that Jonathan is writing through. There's this Pavlovian response to the smell of incense or the smell of candles in church that make, arouses him. I mean, it's a nice taboo at the beginning of, uh, that's broken straight away. We find that more. Um, but Ashes is more clearly about this. I mean, you know, this character rants against the Catholic Church about 
double standards over homosexuality, over abortion, and so on. And so it's breaking a certain set of Polish taboos. But I would argue that it's quite heavily moralistic. And here we have an example. This is a good one on, on Poland. So Magda goes home for, po for, for Christmas, right? And remember, she's Madame Mephisto, okay? She's meant to be... be, 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 be Devilish. Yeah? <laughs> and, um, and, and, and they have a very traditional Christmas that, 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 that the Swiss the graduate is always loving detail, all this food and so on. And um, the mother comes back from the market with something, and this is what it is. It's a painting of a Jew with money for luck. Right? She's brought a little painting of a Jew. For luck, I asked. Magda, how can you forget all our Polish traditions? A few years abroad, and you don't remember you are a Pole, my mother unnecessarily raised her voice. If you have a Jew with money in your house for Christmas, you will have the money for the whole year, she explained slowly. I never recalled this particular tradition. A line of Primo Levi occurred to me. We preserve the memories of our previous life. Why would my mother buy a picture of a Jew? As if she had deliberately erased from her memory the subsequent events of hatred, Oswitzim, Przezinka, the pogroms in Yevabne, Kielce, post-war anti-Jewish violence. How much more had she chosen to ignore? Because it was Christmas and her job was to preserve heritage. What heritage? What an irony of Catholicism and its tradition in Poland. So, yeah, what's going on here? Yeah, the mother's bringing this, this piece of Polish folk tradition that has an element of anti-Semitism mm. in here. And this character, who's meant to be Mephistophelian, yeah, is condemning her for, for preserving elements of anti-Semitism. And of course, my response was, my God, this character should be an anti-Semite. Yeah? That would actually break the taboos. Yeah? I wanted her to be absolutely Nietzschean in her complete uh, uh, abandoning of any moral principles. You know, a drug dealer saying cannabis, you know, she doesn't even sell, I don't know, um, anything much more harmful than that. I just wonder but she whether... Is, yeah, the, I did her deliberately because... Uh, on the one hand, she is obviously opposing mother, and mother is a symbol of everything that she hates about Poland and what she's basically running away from. The, the fact that her mother forces her to um, have some kind of relationship and get married and have children, the kind of stereotype that a lot of mothers you know, impose on us in a way in Poland. And so that's one aspect of her, you know, but she never... And it's right, she never contradicts her. She never contradicts her mother. She does. She, her actions back in London contradict whatever her mum wants her to be in a way, but she never, um, in a way, directly... I mean, there are some passages towards the end of the book, but as if she's scared. I mean, this is the moment when I can't really explain my character. They just start talking, and, you know, and there's this complexity of um, how much she is able to break from that conditioning, the cultural conditioning that she was brought up in. She desperately wants to do it, and yet she never really does it in a way. Whenever I travel to Poland, I hear from and people who are very you know, well-educated, working in art, culture, that I want to leave Poland because I want to live in civilization. Uh, that, for instance, you know, that they don't, they don't you know, that they, they consider, it's, it's, very, it's very, you know, it's very harsh, but uh, certain uh, social freedoms that in here are completely obvious, for you are completely obvious, are just still, to be still won in Poland. And I think that maybe, mm -hmm. you know, every Poland that goes abroad becomes this kind of, uh, re uh, I don't know, social a little social reform mm. reformatory, you know, and, uh, you know, just sees that certain things... You know what we what we lost basically after uh, during the transition. I think you know, that is another question. I would I wouldn't go that far. I okay. mean, maybe I'm too optimistic and I play <laughs> play both bad and you know good policemen here. But but I I'm, I'm reading right now the the book about uh, Libya uh, under Gaddafi. Well, yeah, <laughs> this is of you know oppressive. This is, this is, this is, this is gradual. This is gradual. Yeah. <laughs> Because we are talking here about the first, second, and yeah. third world, basically. In, yes, but but you know, uh, for example, you say that your your friends now are wanted to live in civilization. Of course, they, they, but they, when they I, exaggerate. But when I was leaving Poland, it was uh, ten, ten or twelve years ago. I I didn't I didn't go for civilization. I, I and people who who kind of left Poland at, at this time, if if they did. They just wanted to see how it is abroad, but we we had uh, jobs there, we had life there, yeah. we you know. And yeah, for absolutely. example, uh, just you know, mentioning the Jonathan character, 
right now I, I meet people who are, uh, that are my friends of younger, much younger, 25, for example, 20, and they are like Jonathan, uh, born in Poland, but educated, um, educated ab abroad. Uh, they kind of left Poland when, when they were kids, and they, they have this uh, way of being patriotic that I really respect, because this is, I would say, practical patriotism. Because it's not uh, uh, ideological patriotism that we have to fight for our freedom, like like you know previous wave of, of emigrants, for example. It's it's they are they are young people who are educated uh, abroad. They see what are the differences, but but they like Poland in a way, and they like the, uh, countries where they were educated as well. But they want sometimes to go back to Poland and to to. To, to to do something for Poland and yeah, it's very yeah. practical it's, no, it's I mean the last thing I want mm. to I want to say is to you know just to, conde to con you know you need you, you need not really condemn Poland it's just mm -hmm. uh, I'm just saying that even uh, you know as you, as you as you as you as you suggest that you know this is it's very gradual <coughs> but mm -hmm. uh, I think that again coming back to your gender to the fact that mm -hmm. you're women writers uh, we just see that this uh, the, 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 you know social Social freedoms and so certain, so, you know, women's rights. You know, this is this is just something that definitely in women's many post-communist yes, countries yeah. wasn't, uh, mm -hmm. you know, wasn't uh, wasn't restored. More, moreover, it was mm -hmm. very often went backwards in the relation to the communist time. So yes, it's uh, very, that's the, it's the, very interesting. The, the question about yes, the the, the, the problem uh, with abortion. Uh, that's yeah. that's something that should be done. That's true. But I wanted to ask you seriously. Um, about writing with as a man, or what, where your main character you've deliberately chosen this time mm -hmm. as a feminist writer mm -hmm. to write from the male perspective, and I'm just interested in how you how you did this. You my, know? my starting point was uh, Anna Karenina. I, I was thinking about Anna Karenina because this is the uh, woman. Mm -hmm. Uh, in a love story, uh, a woman who suffers in, in this love story. And I thought the gender roles are changing now and uh, it's time to put men in this kind of uh, love story and to see how he behaves. And especially that I observed uh, a situation like, like, like this, so I, I started to, to, to dig the subject and then I talked to, 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 to my friends uh, about it and I had to learn a lot about male perspective and I still, I, I don't know even half of this, but, uh, but I was really very ambitious, uh, ambitiously talking, talking to them. And I was trying to, to really uh, find uh, rather female, female, female side in, in men or in this character. But the effect it had on me, I found my own <laughs> male <laughs> side. So it was very interesting. So in a way you can, I can say that Jonathan and moi. It was experience. It wasn't that you came, came to it with, with an idea of <coughs> male elements or female elements in, in yourself. You mean was you, it you, instinctively? You actually found it as in, in the process of writing. My fe yes, yeah. kind yes, yes. You might say so. You might say. Oh, it, was it maybe subconscious uh, mm, process of, of, of doing research uh, and and then trying to develop this part? But uh, but here comes Jonathan with his female side. <laughs> Is there anything more to this new European, to this new Europeans, or to this category, than just overcoming the backwardness and yeah? Is there, do you think is there anything more that they contribute to being European, or that justifies this type of new European? To me, a new European is is someone who um, is almost like devoid of a um, nationhood in a way. That the identity of an individual is more of concoction of various cultures. I mean. We talked about the patchwork families, right? I mean, you, you, these are the new Europeans. These are the people that, when they grow up, who are they, actually? I mean, you can't even say they come from a given country. They don't even know exactly where they're coming from, right? So it's, the, the, it's quite uh, interesting because our understanding of what identity is, because I think this is what we're really talking about, how do we perce perceive ourselves, right, is, is constantly evolving. And you can live whatever you want. I mean... Um, most people, and say Western Europe or whatever, right? I mean, we're not talking about countries like um, you know, uh, which have huge um, problems in terms of like wars and stuff like that. But 
more generally speaking, you can basically choose like Grzegna lives in Brussels. I live in London, you know, and we have no intention. I mean, maybe you want to go back to Poland, but I have no intention of going back to Poland. I mean, you know, it's it's you're carrying it in your heart in the way what you are, and I wouldn't. I you know, I find it difficult to call myself a Pole. I feel more British, but then. I'm just a human being. I think labeling, in a way as well, what you are as an individual, it has this potential of um, limiting, um, certain, setting certain limitations in you and your thinking process in a way and your feelings. I think this new European um, image is uh, something uh, that Tim mentioned, uh, actually. Uh, s you know, this image, blurred image of, of a person. I would say not only the role genders are now um, changing and interfering and, and they are blurred. I would say the image of, of the national identity is now uh, a little bit like this. Because as I said, uh, for us, I'm Pole and I'm, I live in Brussels, but I'm Pole, really. I studied Polish literature, I write in Polish, and uh, it's no, no, no doubt about it. But, but my sons, for example, or, or uh, Jonathan uh, as, a, as a character, and I know a lot of Jonathans <coughs> in, in this context, uh, they are not exactly, they are Poles, they can call themselves Poles, but they, they, can, they can call themselves um, uh, French. Uh, this is new European, it's more blurred now, I would say. If I, if I may ask, uh, if I may add something, because let's remember uh, when this term New Europe was actually coined. I mean, there were several New Europes in the last 20 years, basically. Uh, New Europe was also, uh, New Europe was in 2004 in ac uh, um, accession, yeah, the accession the, the of, of the post-communist countries. New Europe was called, uh, if I remember correctly, by Donald Rumsfeld, by countries that were not supporting the, no, that were, support were, support support that were supporting the Iraq war, yeah. And uh, New Europe was this. Uh, New Europe was was also the idea just after eighty nine, after the collapse of the wall, and uh, and I think that today, uh, you know, New Europe was also the the, the name of the uh, very I think uh, curious program by, by by the Guardian conducted conducted in two thousand eleven, of which I was a part of, in which Germany, Spain, France, and Poland were like each uh, given a week in the supposedly, yeah. you know, international newspaper that was, uh, you know, that was New Europe for them. Uh, that was just completely ridiculous to me. <laughs> and I think that, I think that, uh, when, so there is a huge mess in what this New Europe is supposed to mean. But I think that, uh, you know, uh, hearing our, our mis minister of the, of, the, of the foreign affairs, Radek Sikorski, also, uh, uh, surrounded by the nimbus of someone who studied in Oxford, was supposedly dissident in the 80s, uh, was, uh, you know, f why, uh, husband of an Applebaum, who always says Poland will, is finally joining the, uh, the club of the normal, regular European countries. And the more intense he says that, I know that we are not in that club. I know that there is nothing like that. that, that the, more, the more often Polish politicians are talking about the new Europe and the regular po European country, the more it's obvious that we clearly didn't join in many, on many levels the so-called uh, uh, you know, uh, club of the, of the regular European countries. And I think that, that those new Europeans, I mean, it's something that we aspire to. And I think that your character actually successfully has become them. But, but I, think it's something, I think it's something that is hugely, you know, especially today, uh, something that is, uh, you know, should be discussed. But wonderful. Everyone. Thank you so much, both of you, <laughs> Thank and, you. and uh, Agatha as well, for a very interesting discussion, and the rest of you for your yeah. uh, <coughs> contributions to the board. So thank you. But thank most you. Of you.